Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I have this distress sprayed birthday card to share with you. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to start by creating my background and I have a piece of distress watercolor cardstock and then a couple of different sprays. This is lumberjack plaid which is actually a neat color considering reds are not my favorite. And then I have some mica spray stains. Um, I have three of the colors and I don't know if they're from this year or last year. Um, Harvest Moon Cocktail Party and Jack-O-Lantern. I believe the first two are from this year and I think Jack-O-Lantern was from last year. Um, if they're still available, I'll have them linked and listed for you if you're interested. Uh, but they are the mica sprays that Tim Holtz has been bringing out. He brought out uh, some last year, some this year. Uh, and they're phenomenal if you enjoy sprays, uh, which I do. So I did my background there, you kind of saw, and I mostly stuck with vibrant colors that I knew would go well together. So Lumberjack Plaid is a red, um, Cocktail Party is a pink, and then um, Jack Lantern is an orange, and Harvest Moon is a yellow. So I knew that these would all blend really well together. That's why I added so much water to my background when I was starting to spray on it, because I knew that they would play really well together and just create some really neat color blends. And then this is kind of like a mixed media card in that I'm going to bring in a bunch of different elements to kind of just create this really fun card that I kind of look as at as a birthday card, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a birthday card. It could just be um, like a supportive wishing card kind of thing, uh, but I probably would use it as a birthday card to be honest. But And then I did spray on just a little bit of clean, clear water here to the background just to add this kind of bokeh effect and get some cool water droplets. This is honestly just to add some mech extra interest in texture in the background. I really like my cards to have a lot of different things going on. So this is one that I think is a lot of fun. And then I also brought in some of the, um, I think this is the snow, snowfall, snow. It's a distress paste that Tim Holtz came out with. Um, I used it in a palette knife and a um, one of Tim Holtz stencils. Oh, Snowfall. Sorry, it's the Snowfall Grit Paste. I had to look at my list there and uh, remember what it was called. Um, and then the stencil is the Bubbles Layering Stencil. Uh, and I have a palette knife as well. And I just kind of am adding this onto the random places in the background. And then here I'm just going to add a piece of press and seal to the top of my container. This helps me keep them fresh longer. Uh, I do have a few issues with paste. Not too bad because we're not in a super humid area. We're... Um, it's more staticky here, uh, so I have an issue with static cling, but I have found that this just helps me keep my paste fresh longer. And then for my sentiment, I was so in love with the shaker sentiment that I did for that Christmas card that I did on Monday that I really wanted to do this again. I just, I thought it turned out so neat. So I'm going to use another sentiment from Tim Holtz. This is from the bold text one, and I'm also going to run through the candle dyes from the candlelight colorize die set that came out last year. I'm not sure if the candles are still available. If they are, I will definitely link to them. If they're not, I'll try to find something similar. They were a Halloween die that came out last year that I just am in love with. Um, so I do kind of keep using it just because it's such a fun die, but I don't know if they're actually still available. So, I mean, you could obviously replace this with multiple things. You could have put a balloon. I mean, I used candles because I thought they'd be really cool. There are so many things you could put here um, that would work similarly and give you kind of the same idea if you didn't have these candles specifically. But I am I am a big believer in using what you have in your stash. So I'm sure there's some kind of die cut that you could add here instead. I mean, you could theoretically turn this into a Valentine's Day card and use a bunch of heart dies um, and just put them kind of going up beside the sentiment. So lots of options. And then I did trim out the negative of the sentiment. And then I'm cutting out a couple of pieces of acetate. I cut out two because I like to layer my shaker elements together. That kind of, I find, makes it a lot easier to stop the pieces from falling out. And I personally wouldn't get the sentiment on straight if I just had to adhere it to the uh, card panel with some shaker bits just sitting there. That doesn't work for me. So... I do tend to just um, encase my shaker bits in two pieces of acetate because I think that's way easier for me. So I'm going to adhere the piece of acetate to the front of the window, creating the kind of window effect. Um, and then I will add the acetate on top and then add some foam tape to give you that dimension to actually be a shaker. Um, but 
there's no right or wrong way to do this, of course. Um, you guys know if you followed my channel for a while, I love making flat shaker cards. Um, so I tend to make those more than the traditional shaker elements just because I find that I don't like a lot of bulk. Um, because I like to mail a lot of my cards, I have pen pals and uh, I love to mail things to people. So I do uh, try to keep them as flat as humanly possible. So I thought that this was kind of a, a fun way to kind of get around it because I'm only using foam strips and it's only shaking behind the sentiments. So you can't really tell that there's supposed to be a ton of things shaking around. So I kind of like this as like a cheat for a shaker element that's not the whole card and it's also not um, super thick and adding a lot of dimension. So this is kind of my my way to do it. And I'm using Doris foam strips. Now, apparently they stopped making these. I did not know that. Uh, so I will link to different foam strips that I think would work very similarly. Um, but you can't get these specific foam strips anymore, which is really sad because I like these foam strips. Um, but there are others on the market. So I mean, it's not really that important. And I keep going out of frame. Sorry about that. It's just so I can make sure that my seams are, are connecting really well. So that I don't have to worry about uh, the shaker pieces kind of just falling out of my little shaker window that I'm creating. So I do have to kind of be aware of that. Um, and if you guys didn't know, I know some of you do because some of you have sent me some letters. Thank you so much. I did open a P.O. box. Uh, I had some interest in sending me letters um, or Christmas cards or whatever you feel like look, sending with me and sharing with me. And I really want to say thank you to the, the ladies that have reached out. I really appreciate opening your letters and seeing the beautiful cards that you're making. So thank you so much for sharing those with me. The uh, address is in the description down below if you're at in all interested. No pressure. Um, completely up to you if you feel like you would like to share something with me. Much appreciated. And I do respond. I sent some letters back to the lovely ladies that I've received. Um, much appreciated. And uh, just I thought it would be really fun to kind of have this card sending thing going on. So I really am enjoying opening the P.O. Box and getting mail from people randomly all over the world. Although, interestingly enough, the first few people that sent me something, they're all from California, which I thought was really neat. Because, um, I mean, random that you would get, you know, three pieces of mail and all three of them are from uh, places in California. So I just, I thought that was really neat. But I thought I would share with you guys that piece and I will have uh, a look at those cards when I start my studio vlogs. I have them saved on the side. I have lots of fun stuff planned for my studio vlogs. I just, it's one of those things where I'm trying to find time to do all the things that I'd like to do and that uh, can be a bit of a struggle. But you did see me add some shaker bits into the little shaker sentiment there and I just used Distress Rock Glitter a rock candy glitter and the mica flakes by Tim Holtz. And then here I just wanted to add a little more texture to the background. So this is a stamp set that also came out Halloween this year. It's the Gothic Tapestry. And it's this lovely stamp of notes, which was one of the selling features of that stamp set to me. I don't have anything like it and I thought it would just look really neat. So <clears throat> excuse me, I had to add it to my collection. And I have Barn Door Distress Ink. It's the archival ink mini there just because I wanted to have that red in there and I can you can kind of see it there when I hold it up I just really want it to be subtle and just have some extra interest in texture in the background there is quite a bit of texture in this you're gonna see me struggle a little bit to get things to adhere um, so I did use my misty to hold down my card base or my panel here when I adhered it because it was curled a little bit from all the, the moisture and then when I go to adhere my sentiment and the little candles I end up using acrylic blocks so that just kind of made it easier for me to get things to adhere where I wanted them to be. And then here I'm just putting the candle together because it comes with a little flame and some drippy wax, which I think is just really cool. So I'm just adhering it all together. And originally when I was making this, I had intended to leave this white um, along with the sentiment and then have these stand out against the very colored background. Um, but in the end, I opted to change that idea a little bit and add a little bit more color in. Um, you'll see that when we get to that part. But originally, I thought this is why I'm adhering it before I colored or add anything else to it, because I, I thought that I was going to leave them white. But I do change my mind after that. And I do adhere my candles together. Because there's so much texture in the background, I was struggling to get them to line up. So the easiest way to kind of get them to stay the way I wanted them to was just adhere them together and then adhere them onto the background. 
So you're going to see here in a second, I do use some acrylic blocks to hold it down because there is a bunch of texture paste here. So it didn't really want to adhere at all. And you can't see the texture paste so much now. You will when I hold it up in the end and kind of get a better look at when I tip in the light. Um, but it is there and it is beautiful. It's just um, very difficult to see at this stage. But I think that the person who receives this card, whoever that may be, um, will enjoy all that interest and texture in the background because it's quite pretty. And this is where I decided I really wanted to mirror that yellowy orange color in the top left corner. So I brought in two of my Copic markers for this. I used Y02 and YR04. And I just really wanted to create that same kind of flame color effect that's kind of going up on that corner. You could use the sprays to do this. I just found it easier for such a small area to use my Copics because it's they're so easy to use with small areas so that's kind of what I was thinking and then of course I couldn't resist the glitter so I brought in my Spectrum Noir clear get clear glitter pen and added it across the back or the just the melty part of the candle and the wick the flame that I had just added color to and then once that was dry I couldn't resist making these flames shine even more so I brought in a little bit of glossy accents just on the flames and shockingly enough I am not going to add any more gems or glitters or pieces to this I'm just going to let it be as it is because I think that it looks really pretty here how it's already done so hopefully you can kind of get some of that interest and texture in the background and that mica and the shine I just I love it I think that it turned out really pretty I'm pretty excited about it so I'd love to know what you guys think if you have any uh, comments for me I'd love if you'd leave them I do read all of my comments and respond when I have a minute sometimes I get a little bit behind but I do always read everything that you leave so I'd love if you leave me a comment leave me a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and currently we are in the middle of the 12 weeks of Christmas series every Monday. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.